Get across, Lisa Jones, if he seals. And we are underway. There are so many keys to this basketball game. I mean, there's more keys than a junior high janitor wears. Right, there's so much. These teams know each other so well. Once you get to Big 12 play, you know how the other teams play. You know their identity. So now it's who can execute the best, whose pace tonight is this game going to favor? That's the big question. And offensive rebounding because this is what makes OU dangerous. They get the offensive rebound and they hit the three. That's something that concerned Krista Gerlich today. It is. That was the first thing she said to us in shoot around today was if they get an offensive rebound, they're either going to get fouled or they're going to hit a three. And first play of the game, that's exactly what they did. And then the turnover. You a great pass to Todd on the layup. Got it. Todd already with five in a ball game. Tech is going to have to find a way to get some scores and get back in transition because this OU team has such a high-powered offense. Tatum Weitenheimer getting the start, only her third start of the season, the first since November 16th for Tech. She's a former Oklahoma Sooner, former roommate of Maddie Williams. In size, Jazz Lewis point blank. Margin of error, not small, but not big. Texas Tech's got to make those shots. They really do, and that was a beautiful, should have been assist there by Bryn Gerlich to Jazz. And Jazz finishes at a high clip in the paint, so that she's not going to miss very many of those shots. Well, West Virginia in the Baylor game, Tot was 0 for 2 shooting. Came back in the Iowa State game 4 for 10, and that was huge. And now she starts off 3 for 3. That's a good sign for them, but that's part of why they're so talented offensively. They have such balanced scoring across the board, especially with their five starters and then Skylar Van off the bench for them. And right now in the beginning, Texas Tech getting just one shot. That's it. Robertson pokes it. Yanusa playing with that brace on her right knee. Dribble penetration. Scott turn around. No. Weitenheimer tipped it into the hands of Jasmine Shavers. The redshirt freshman out of Mesquite, Texas. There's Shavers on Yanusa. Great screen by Lewis. Opened her up, and Maddie Williams has it. And this is what makes Maddie Williams so dangerous. She lost the ball, but she can lead the break. Shavers on Williams. Got it, and Williams commits the foul. Here's Jazz Shavers. Both coaches making early substitutions in this game. Now, if you haven't followed Tech, Krista Gerlich has mixed and matched her lineup a lot this season. And Coach Bracek telling us that makes it difficult because they have so many different parts. Correct. You, that was one of her concerns, the communication, because your, your matchups are going to be switching. Rana Yudusa leading the Big 12 in points per game in conference play. Inside. Coming out of the pack is Van, and a whistle and a foul is going to be called. You know, first and foremost, she talked about just energy and intensity, because when you're on the road, you have to be focused to win road games in the Big 12. And then, like we just talked about, their communication. There's going to be different lineups. There's going to be different defenses thrown at them by Tech, and they have to have great communication. And so they've just got to stay in attack mode offensively. 12 to 3 is their score. Oklahoma's hit five of their first six shots. Ella Tofeono inside. How about Skylar Van on that last play? Great pass. This is a veteran Oklahoma team. They've been together a couple years. The big difference for them has been in practices. Right, because they've been together so long. This is really a veteran team that has played together a lot. So they understand the system, they understand how to play together. Shavers thought she had the mismatch on Taylor Robertson, took advantage of it. And the lead cut to seven. From the outside, Skyler Van had 17 in the last meeting between these two teams. Texas Tech beat Oklahoma in Norman last year in that contest. And here is Bryn Gerlich. Yes, that is the coach's daughter. She had treatment on her leg on Monday, was really in a lot of pain because of a back problem. Didn't practice Monday, came out yesterday and shot well as Katie Farrell hits the turnaround. That's called running the court and rewarding Beatrice Culleton. Watch Oklahoma's players offensively. The minute that the rebound is secured, their first three steps down the floor are tremendously hard. There is Bree Scott. Didn't start the game, and she's going to be fouled. She doesn't want to run a whole lot of sets. She wants them to make basketball plays and run down and transition and score before the defense is set. Started her career at Mississippi State. They went to 
Little Rock getting to the free throw line is one of her special right her ability to get to the foul line has been so good for Tech this season and they need that they need that extra offense from her Lewis can't get it Skylar Van does a beautiful pass inside Culleton can't finish Van gets it back Culleton says go this way Scott with a jumper no Gerlich pulls it away to mop it Tech got lucky though that they left that possession, you know, empty for Oklahoma because they got multiple offensive rebounds. Lewis had great position and gets the roll. <laughs> Oklahoma just one of their last nine shooting the basketball, and all of a sudden the lead is three. It was nine for the Sooners, but Van drops it off. Little miscommunication. Here is Brent Gerlich out front. Over 500 career points this season. As Brandy mentioned, over 300 assists. Moppin, nice pump fake. Got Jones in the air and makes her pay. Now she's been off the bench the last three games, but the TCU game broke out of a one for 11 three-point shooting slump. By going two for three, that's going to be a turnover. We'll go the other way with it. Katie Farrell's going to come back in also. And... Krista Gerlich understands Katie Farrell. They played with each other at, at UTA, and Katie Farrell can get in foul trouble, so Krista's going to keep an eye on it. She did talk to Katie about staying in the game. Moppin on the drive, and she gets the foul called, and that's going to be on Scott. And that'll be her first. She understands that when she's not on the floor because of foul trouble, that's hurting her teammates. <laughs> exactly, and, and she has become a huge crowd favorite here. I talked to Sharika today, and they always ask me, how's Katie doing? <laughs> <laughs> She's doing great. Goes right in the hands of Kennedy Tucker, the senior out of Little Rock. And then Tucker called for the charge. Maupin learning from the senior. Folks, let me tell you, this is a girl that got up at 5 o'clock in the morning to work on her dad's cattle ranch. I mean, she worked with cows in the morning, made sure they fed, sneaks back door, gets the two, Tech has the lead. She does it all. She does. That's that's why they call her West Texas Stuff. <laughs> yeah, that is. But beautiful execution there, and that's part of the tech, uh, Texas Tech's keys. If they set good screens, it's going to lead to some open offense for them. 6-0 six, six run by the Lady Raiders, and a foul is going to be called. Nice drive by Nevaeh Todd. That foul, by the way, was on Maupin. That was her first personal. Here is Janusik. Saw the crowd. Scott tried to take the charge. Outside, offensive rebound and put back by Scott. And here is Liz, Liz Scott, the senior out of Tomball, Texas. Klein Oaks High School, academic second team, Big 12. We've been talking to the players yesterday in practice at Texas Tech. They said, Scott and Skylar Van have been thorns on our side. <laughs> But they're just those tough, hard-nosed players that come in and do all the little things. They defend, they rebound. Final five seconds. Katie Farrell off balance. Wanted the foul. Not going to get it. And Tech will have it with 1.9 left in the quarter. After a tough start, Tech has really done a good job battling their way back. Kind of settled in a little bit after Oklahoma came out with that kind of cannon effect right away on the road. Now, we saw Kyla Freeland, the freshman, check into a game earlier this year and hit a shot with 1.5 left. Can she do it again? Puts it up. God, it does it again. Have mercy. That is Kyla. Freeland's play right there, that little out of bounds play. They get it every time. She has been very impressive in her career, but we start even in quarter number two. Along with Randy Poole, WNBA coach, now with the Dallas Wings. I'm Ron Thulin, and congratulations to the newest assistant coach for the Dallas Wings, former Oklahoma Sooner, Courtney Parrish. I'm so very excited oh, I'm with her. I had to remember watching her and her playing days. She's so talented. In fact, Maddie Williams. You know, Courtney Paris was the only Oklahoma Sooner to lead the team in rebounding four straight years until Maddie came along. Uh, both super talented on the glass. Second time in her career. Tech pulling out their signature press after that free throw to kind of slow them down a little bit there, too. And the rebound pulled away by Lewis. Whistle and a foul is going to be called. And Jenny Baranchek wanted to get her out of the game. They were going to bring Skylar Van in. Inside, Lewis with the two. <laughs> When Lewis is in the game, they've got to go to her. They've got to make Oklahoma defend in the paint. 
And the three is buried. You know what? But that's what a good player does. They let it go. They come back down, and she steps up and makes a big-time confident three. I tell you, you know, you, you look in the past. She really didn't have a 15- to 18-footer, Maddie Williams. She sort of added that this season. That's her 10th three. You know, she's definitely very capable at the arc. She's oh, just yeah. not asked to shoot a whole lot within their offensive system at times. And just her length in the post really bothered Jazz Lewis on that last defensive possession. Well, she's she's going to have some good years ahead of oh, her. Oh, I agree. Led that Duncanville team to 34-7 and record last season. Made it to the state semis. That yeah. program knows how to win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Men and, and, and the guys, too. Both of them do. Katie Farrell, nice pass inside. Scott. Beautiful job there attacking their zone. Getting it to the high post. Bree, Bree Amber Scott dove from the short corner. Yanusa did not waste any time. Scott comes up with it. But you saw after that basket, Oklahoma doesn't waste any time getting the ball up the court, allowing the defense to set up. And Shaver's on the drive. No, not at all. And Tex doing a good job taking advantage of some of their miscues and getting it back down the floor quickly themselves. And Krista Gerlich spent a lot of time in practice yesterday and today telling him you got to get back quickly. Oklahoma doesn't wait for you. No, they don't. And they want to try to stop the ball and turn the ball as much as possible. Quick move by Yanusa parries the three. Pretty with a capital P. That's everybody, right? There's so, what are there, five, six ranked teams right now exactly. in the Big 12? Oklahoma currently 19th. Shavers try to get her own board. Top the rebound. Gavea Tad out of McKinney, Texas. John Paul, the second high school. So calm running the point out front. Robertson. A oh, beautiful pass inside and color time. Outstanding position on Bryn Gerling. That was good high-low pass to Colton, who had her posted up in the paint. But Tech did a good job taking some time off the shot clock, which is not how Oklahoma wants to play. And Bryn Gerling breaks a two-minute scoring drive for the Lady Raiders. Turning into a tight game. This is a good game. <laughs> I mean, Oklahoma had an exciting game against Iowa State over the weekend. Scott tipped it. Gerlich to Tatum Weitenheimer. Weitenheimer, who graduated in December out of Winthorpe, Texas. From the outside, nothing but the bottom of the net. But when you're playing this up-tempo, right, you want people to right. run and play as hard as they can, and then you can get them out, get them a quick breather, get them back in, keep everybody fresh. I love it because there's so many different styles of play in the Big 12 this season. It makes it fun. It really does. <laughs> then, it, then it gives you an ulcer. But. <laughs> Yanusa posting up on Gerlich with a left hand. See that smile on Ana Yanusa's face this season has been so joyous to watch. Scott from the outside for three. And the lead is three outside. No. Nice job. Timeout's going to be called. Riley McKinney was able to keep it alive. And Brent Gerland just doing it all. Rebounding, assisting, scoring when she's left open. Um, run, really running her team well tonight. I think if Krista Gerland's got to be concerned about something, has given up second chance points. Oklahoma with eight. Texas Tech has only given up 11 second chance points total in the last two games. Feono, who stepped up big in the TCU game with a little revert. Yanusa McKinney picks her up. Now they switch. Jones outside. Talk about a quick shot. I mean, you look at Robertson and Jones. Right now, tonight, though, Tech's doing a pretty good job on those two incredible scores. You know, talking to Maddie and, and also on a Yanusa in the media day, Back in October, they both said we still had something to prove. Inside, Gerlich's going to be called for the foul. And here is Scott again. Coach Jenny Baranchek, the Des Moines, Iowa native. First OU coach to sweep Baylor at Oklahoma State in the regular season. Did that last season. So I'm sure she's not real happy with it. She just wants him to relax and play basketball. I still like her line. 
We play better when we're happy. Right. Well, doesn't everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah Yanusa no, gets it back again and drains it. And she can score the ball well enough without giving her easy second chance opportunities. A third of their points right now are coming off of offensive rebounds. Chevalier on top, Weitenheimer against her former team. On top, Maupin wide open. Look and makes him play with a three. We said there was going to be a lot of assists tonight. That was a beautiful assist by Chevalier to share the ball to Bailey Maupin, the better shooter. Extra pass, good to great. You love it. How about 10 assists tonight for Texas Tech? The only average is shade under 14. And Jenna Cross blows the whistle, and a foul is going to be called. Maupin coming off a 14-point game versus TCU. Most points she's had since... December 1st, when she had 17 versus Alabama State. Scott gets them both. Oklahoma shooting just 35% of this game. Tech at 48%. Avery Ember Scott adds to that with her second three of the night. Good. No time for celebrating, though. No. Oh, you was going to come right back at you. You got to get back. <laughs> Tech has hit six of their last seven inside. Yanusa, beautiful cut. That's one. We talk about her being such a pretty shooter and catch and shoot, but what's underrated about Yanusa is her ability to move off right. the ball. She cuts, she moves, she hunts shots. She's just a smart offensive player. And she's unselfish. Averages two and a half assists a game. Shot clock, about a three second difference. Shot of the game clock. Tech closing out this first half on a pretty good little run. Weitenheimer on top, Maupin. That should be a travel, and it will be. Her second personal foul. Maddie only playing 15 minutes in this game so far. Outside, no. And I think these first three minutes out of halftime are critical for these two teams. Who's going to come out firing? Who's going to execute? Who's going to kind of flex first? And they flex first, the Oklahoma Sooners. And I'm not surprised it's Maddie Williams. She knows she did not no. bring enough to the table in the first half. Six minutes and 20 seconds, 26 seconds, she picked up her second personal foul, had to sit. Katie Farrell also picked up two. Turn around, Scott. Didn't start the game, but Scott, 13. Right, and this is going to be a fun matchup to watch these two defend each other. Wide open. That's a defensive breakdown. That allowed Maddie Williams to get the easy deuce. Yeah, Bree just tried to get around her in the post, and they were able to lob it right into her. So Maddie Williams, the leader of this Oklahoma team, hands down. Shavers. Gerlick for three over Yanusa. Buries it. Again, well-executed offense there out of a little horn set. Coach Gerlick, and I said, I can't believe that because she could barely walk on Sunday and Monday. And she's and Brent told me she goes, my leg feels better. She agreed to me, by the way, just for the record, okay? Sorry, Dad. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Spin move. Shavers, tough shot. No! Katie Farrell goes down hard. Robertson comes out of the pack quickly up ahead to Todd. Oh, beautiful cut. Great pass from Todd. That is her third assist. Defense wasn't rotated over there to pick up that Scott cutting down. The Shavers for three. Yes. <laughs> Texas Tech, six of ten beyond the arc. Boy, Robertson being hounded by Weitenheimer. They're good friends. Whistle, foul, count the basket. And trust to play her without picking up quick, cheap fouls. Three-point play completed. Reamber Scott for three. No. Roberts in the board. That's her fifth rebound of the ball game. Both teams doing a good job so far not allowing offensive rebounds as the teams yeah. have gotten into a couple of misses here and there over the last few minutes. Canusa will run the point out front. And the shot goes down. Taylor Robertson does not hit many shots inside the arc. But when I've watched her now for a number of years, she can just explode. Moppin, no. Robertson takes it away. What a job she has done on the boards. The three for Yanusa parries it. 
And the Sooners have taken the lead. And that's where Oklahoma is so dangerous. You can't let them going, hitting threes and trips. Inside of 10 to shoot. Scott. That's going to be an offensive foul. She's hit at least one three-pointer. She's hands down one of the best shooters in the country right now, and and des des deservedly so, right? But Tech has done a really good job tonight of limiting her her threes at the arc. Sneaking behind the back, and they got it with Skylar Van. Oklahoma's hit their last three field goal attempts. Lewis posting up. And she shuffled the feet. And that'll only be the seventh turnover. Just can't get so focused on right. it that there's no movement and they're still not, you know, moving without the ball. Chevalier trying to keep step for step up with Ty. Inside again, Skyler Vance. Riley McKinney, they want her to shoot more. McKinney has not taken a shot tonight. Scott baseline got it. She's got 15. That stops a 12-0 run. Boy, Maddie Williams, great position on Katie Farrell inside. She's really good around the rim when she can get those deep post finishes. Maddie Williams only three points in that opening half. She's got six here in the third. McKinney, tough pull up, short armed it, and it'll belong to Oklahoma. It looked as though Oklahoma was the last to touch it. Good job by the officiating crew changing it. If you look at that last basket again, she knows it's more important for her to stay on the floor. Maddie Williams is going to get a little bit of a breather. Final 229 here in the third. McKinney, wide open, three, buries it. They needed that, and OU was in a little bit of a zone there. Good inside-out ball movement again by Tech to find the open shooter. And we know Riley McKinney did not. She oh. barely missed a shot in the non-conference, so I think she needs to see that for her own confidence. Top from the outside. No, Scott, the rebound. They're going to call a foul against Texas Tech. Well, I, I just thought it was just two she people fighting for her, position. She didn't look her, but she was just yeah. boxing around. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of a cheap one when games are this physical. That I don't like that call. Good job by Brent Gerlich poking it away, but the Sooners have it inside of two to play. Jones, no, and the foul is going to be against Skyler Van. Chevalier now running the point out front. Ella Topeono getting position inside. The move with the left hand, no. Tried to keep it alive and commits the infraction. I'm going to give Coach Planette Pearson a shout out for that because she's time. done such a great job with these post players. Ella gives them really good minutes off the bench in the post. She has been such a factor for this team, the junior out of Deer Creek High School in Edmond, a suburb of Oklahoma City. Brent Gerlich using that right arm to try to get position. Was accepted into a physical therapy program. It's a three-year program. I guess she becomes a doctor. Came into this game just 10 three-pointers made away from the all-time lead in the NCAA, which is held by one of the greats in college and the WNBA, Kelsey Mitchell. Bren tries to go up and under, gets the foul called again. For Bren, back-to-back double-figure games, five rebounds and five assists. Better than a two-to-one assist-to-turnover ratio. Had only missed six free throws coming into this game. Here's Todd. One point advantage with 48 seconds left in the third for Oklahoma. Good defense so far by the Lady Raiders. Really making them work the clock. Getting Todd stopped in transition. Green girl mm. staying right with Yanusa, but that allows the lane to open wide up for Skylar Van. Yeah, that's a tough matchup because Skylar Van's really good on the perimeter. She can shoot it. You saw her. Just a little pump that got Ella off her feet. And then it was just a wide open layup. She's, Ella's got to be able to stay down on the perimeter. And you saw that Brent Gerlich didn't want to leave Yanusa. Right. <laughs> so she was kind of in a, in a no man's land. About a half a second different shot of the game clock. Weitenheimer. McKinney pull up from 19 and she's got five in the ball game. Robertson at the buzzer, not going to get it. So Texas Tech led at the end 
of the half. But in the third, Oklahoma outscores Tech by five. Offensive putbacks, so they've just done a really good job scoring in the paint. Gerlich leans inside. Yanusa having a monster game again with 16 points. And it ends up in a layup. The lead is three. Gerlich now being guarded by Scott. McKinney, catch and shoot, no. Weitenheimer offensive rebound to get a fresh 20. Scott uses one second of that and buries it. Scott with 18 and we're tied. Best time to shoot threes off of offensive there rebounds. You we saw that early in the game for Oklahoma. Bree Amber Scott again just confidently stepping up, making that three. Fifth tie, eight lead changes, and the two goes down for Taylor Robertson. Still looking for that three. Right, but at least they're making her go two by two by two, exactly. and not by threes. <laughs> and she could put three or four in a row. Bren Gerlich, and she knocks down the three. Gerlich with 15. Three off the mark, offensive rebound and put back by Maddie Williams. Gotta put a body on her. Tech turns it over. Bad time to turn it over. Into the hands of Nevea Tot. Williams. Pump fakes on her roommate. <laughs> Bailey Maupin wants to check in the Tech's lineup. Scott, no. Shavers fights for the offensive rebound. Scott, we've got a whistle and a foul inside Oklahoma team. They're on pace to shatter Oklahoma's record for points per game. It was set in 84-85. That was 84.5. Tech has gone back to their small lineup and their scoring lineup. This is a big-time scoring lineup for Texas Tech. 68th meeting between these two teams. From the outside, buried by Skyler Van. Scott being guarded by Van. Maupin couldn't save it. That'll be a turnover. And this is where you've got to lock in. You have to execute. You have to get stops on the stretch of this game. Comes down to the little things. Eddie Baracek saying their team the last two years have played well in close games. The three by Yanusa. She's got 19 tonight. Most teams want to keep that around 33%. So that is just too, too high. Too many second chance opportunities for an already talented offensive team. Well, Katie Farrell is going to be called for the offensive foul, and that'll be number five on her. And this is an interesting lineup. It is almost... A five guard lineup. It, it is a five guard lineup. It, it kinda, I looked up, I went, okay, who's, who'd be the well, girl, I guess? It's five scoring guards, though. There you go. And they need to generate some points right now. And Yanus is going to be fouled by Shavers. Taiwo's 33 points, career high in that game for TCU. Right, both games were incredible games to watch just as a fan of women's basketball. Learn to, to win close games. And time and score down the stretch is so huge when you're under five minutes here in a close game. Seven of the last oppo nine opponents for Oklahoma have shot under 39%. Tech shot 50% in the first half. Scott gets open. It's Bailey Maupin got one in the first half. Great, Great job defense. by Brent Gerlich coming up with a steal, her first of the wall game. We always talk about score, stop, score. So they got a score, they got a stop. Can they get a score here to string things, some scores together? How about that turnover margin? Second in the Big 12. Can't get it to go. Robertson pulls it away. Those are the ones you can't leave on the board. Robertson still looking for her first three of the ball game. As soon as she catches it, Maupin was right in front of her. But a great play on the inside. Skyler Van opens up. And you can see OU foul trouble. Maddie Williams with four. Tucker four. Yanusa with three. Scott two. Van two. Maupin no. And it's been a cold streak now for the Lady Raiders. Quick turnaround. Perry. Last year, first power five player to average 11 and a half, five and a half rebounds, one and a half assists, fewer than two starts. 
and the lid is on the basket for the Lady Raiders. We go inside of three. It really is. They've missed three straight baskets inside the arc, essentially, the restricted arc. I want to thank Josh Pote, Sports Information Director for the Women's Basketball, coming up with that little nugget. Some of these guys have incredible game notes, too, with crazy oh, good stuff. Yeah. OU's hit their last four shots. Texas Tech, only one of their last eight. And the lead is 10, biggest of the game for either team. Ella Tofeono, nice pass. McKinney has it rejected by Van. Like we talked about earlier, against such a good scoring team like Oklahoma, you just can't have long scoring drops. And the streak continues for Taylor Robertson. You know, she just has such confidence in her shot. We've remarked over the years watching her in so many situations, no matter where her feet are, anything, it leaves her hand the same way every time. Right. Ella rolls to the hoop. Great pass from Gerlich. Her sixth assist. Again, Stops an 8 good run. offense there. When they execute and set good screens, they're getting good shots. Offensive rebound, no. 156 to play. Plenty of time. The lead is nine for the Sooners. Gerlich launches. Gets the pound. She's got a season high 18. McKinney on the steal. Can't finish. Quick outlet to Robertson. Here is Janusa. Beautiful pass, knocks over Gerlich, no foul called. Yanusa Van, all with five or more assists. Van's got six. That is amazing. It is, and that's just a credit to their offense and sharing the Three, Scott knocks down the three. Well, Tech needed to generate some points quickly, and they've been able to come down and do that now, so they've got to get some stops. To back to back 20 point games for Bree Scott. The lead is seven inside of 55 to play. Williams on McKinney. Robertson, there's that quick release splash. You can't leave her for a second. Riley McKinney helped off. Like, give up the two. Give up the two instead of leaving Taylor Robertson on ball side. You can't leave good shooters in ball side corners. Bryn Gerlich with 34 seconds. Let's it fly into the hands of Robertson. What a game this has been. Texas Tech led at halftime. They led 42-38. At the end of three, Oklahoma led 62-61. And Oklahoma, great game. So great game. Both sides of the ball. Both teams have battled. Both teams have made big shots. Williams from the outside, no. Robertson lets it go. Oklahoma on their way to winning their 10th out of their last 11th. Looking for their first regular season title since 2009. On their way to winning their 10th out of their last 11th. Looking for their first regular season title since 2009. I think at the end of the day, the Lady Raiders are just going to be really disappointed in their rebounding numbers tonight. Oklahoma outscoring Texas Tech 27-18 in that final stanza.